Hello viewers, we have with us Ms. Catherine Fogg from North Hydro. Thank you for joining us, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you've spoken about renewable energy for the aluminum sector. You know, one question that comes to my mind when we talk about renewable energy is the viability in terms of production numbers and costs. How do you see uh, the industry combating these challenges? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good, uh, good question as an in important one and of course it's where we've seen a very important and, and impressive, I think, development over the last uh, years. If we go some years back we were looking at the, the traditional uh, power sources such as coal, uh, nuclear for that matter, gas uh, on the one hand and renewables on the other hand and say well the renewable cost was too high, it would no never be able to, uh, to compete. Now, uh, the traditional fossil fuels also have a cost. They have a, a capex cost, and as you know, it's it's a fuel that needs to be uh, replenished. So you still have to develop new mines and new gas fields. So there's a capex, and there's some quite important opex cost to fossil fuels. Uh, renewable energy, solar, uh, wind, uh, but also uh, hydropower. The the fuel or the lack of fuel, the, the, the wind, the, the sun, uh, the water, is essentially uh, free. So the cost is really the, the capex. Uh, it used to be high, uh, but we've seen with massive investments all over the world, starting a lot in Europe, then uh, taken over by China. Um, we've seen the, the capex cost of renewables coming down impressively from uh, over, over the last years. And I think I was hearing at LME week last, um, uh, in London last week that uh, in 2016, 40% of all capacity investments in, in power globally was renewables, 50% if you include hydropower. Now that's quite, uh, quite impressive and that's how we see the cost coming, uh, coming down. When we talk about uh, you know, aluminium production, a large number is from the South Asian markets like China, India, mm. you know, and uh, for them to move to renewable energy sources, how do you see uh, the green aluminium demand picking up in these markets? Mm. That's another very, very good question and uh, uh, if, on the face of it that will of course be a huge challenge. The smelters in, in this area, well in China and India, the smelters are uh, based on coal-based uh, power for the most part. There's some hydro, uh, hydropower-based uh, smelters, especially in, in China and other parts of uh, Southeast Asia, so, uh, as Malaysia. But if you look only at the power source, this of course will be, uh, be a challenge. It's, it's difficult to see that you can replace the amount of uh, power that's now coal-fired with renewables. Uh, but when you look at aluminium, I think you, you have to look at sort of the green aluminium or eco-friendly aluminium as a, as a triangle. So you have the power source, which is important, and coming from, from hydro, we are hydropower based. So, so of course we look at that as one very important issue, but the two other corners as well. So one corner is the recyclability of aluminium. And aluminium once produced is infinitely recyclable, using only 5% of the original power and can you do it again and again and again. 75% of all aluminium ever produced is still in use, so it's a huge power bank really, or energy bank really. And for the industry to take responsibility to make sure that post-consumed scrap, so aluminium in products that have been used, are taken back into the supply chain, we are then taking care of that energy and putting it back into the chain. So that's the second uh, second corner. And then the third corner, of course, is aluminum in use. So aluminum has a lot of wonderful properties. It's, it's lightweight, uh, its strength, its versatility, its, its connectivity, a lot of different pro uh, properties that makes it very uh, use, usable in, in a lot of sectors. And in those sectors, it will contribute to reduce emissions, it will contribute to reduce um, energy use. The typical example is of course automotive, where we see aluminium taking market share from, uh, from steel. We get lighter cars in the, the sort of the conventional cars, so they will use less fuel and therefore have less emissions. 
And I think we're, there's been a lot of talk about it both here and, and over the last weeks and months about electric vehicles, the EVs. Again, where because of the weight of the battery, the car needs to be lightweight. And aluminium has an obvious place there as well. In buildings, building systems, to make sure that buildings use energy uh, more effectively, aluminium has uses in all of these sectors and thereby will contribute. So it's the, it's the power source, the fuel source, it's the recycling and it's the use of aluminium products that reduce emissions in, in the consumption phase. So all of those I think you have to look at.